If you clicked on this video to find out how to get better sleep quality, then you are in the right place. Because today I'm going to be sharing 10 things that could be having a huge impact on your sleep quality. I'll be sharing what modern brain research has discovered about what exactly is happening inside our brain when we sleep. And then I'll be sharing the number one thing that has completely um, destroyed my sleep quality whenever I do it and how you can avoid that. And by the end of this video, you'll also know the best sleep position for you. Um, so yeah, let's get right into the video. Even though we think of sleep as an inactive process, our brain is actively carrying out some really important processes when we sleep. Uh, so here's what we know so far. Number one, there's a processing of memories. And memories are usually solidified during sleep. So it's really important for people studying for exams, for example, to take their sleep seriously. Number two, uh, replenishing and circulating cells involved in our immune system. So really important to fight off viruses and bacteria that may um, enter our body. Number three, the CSF or cerebral spinal fluid is cleaned out of debris and waste proteins. Things like tau and uh, beta amyloid plaques which are often seen in Alzheimer's patients which is the most common form of dementia. But it's also seen um, in other forms of dementia, um, like Lewy bodies, Huntington's disease, and Parkinson's disease. And number four, if you attach electrodes to someone's head, it's called an EEG. Um, we now know that during sleep, um, the brainwave state seen um, of this electrical activity in the brain is called delta brainwave state. So I'll try and leave a picture of that. Um, and number five, finally, it's generally really essential for health. So poor sleep has been linked to things like cancer, um, obviously dementia, heart disease, as well as a lot of other diseases. So it's really important uh, we take our sleep seriously. So let's get into the 10 top tips. So number one, the biggest mistake that I've made many times in my life is eating a big meal before going to sleep. This has many detrimental um, <laughs> effects on sleep, mainly because your body needs to direct blood flow to your gut instead of to your brain, where the resources are needed to get good quality sleep. Number two is sunlight. Um, it was recently discovered, I believe, at either Harvard or Stanford um, Medical University, that we have a specific group of cells called melanopsin ganglion cells at the back of our eye, where our retina is, and they basically detect um, a certain shade of sunlight, which happens around the time of sunrise and sunset. And this particular colour, which includes blues and reds and all sorts of different spectrums, I don't know exactly, but um, it tells our brain that it's time to wake up or go to sleep. So this helps to set our circadian rhythm, our body's internal clock of knowing when to, to wake up or go to sleep. So um, sunlight's really important. It's important to note that windows um, will reduce this effect by about 50 times. Um, so it's really important to get outside, get sunlight on your eyes uh, when you wake up and, and later in the day as well so you can get your body to sleep. Number three is regularity. Um, this helps to set our circadian rhythm that I mentioned earlier. And there's many health benefits to having regular time sleep and many health problems that can happen um, when you don't get enough sleep. So um, if you're interested in reading deeper on the topic, I recommend this book, Why We Sleep by Matthew Walker. Um, there's plenty of really good evidence-based research in there which is referenced, so highly recommend you read that. Number four that I've not seen anywhere else on the internet is mood. So we know that in patients with depression, they tend to sleep longer and patients with high mood um, or mania tend to sleep less. So mood plays a really important role on sleep and it impacts on our sleep a lot. Number five is temperature. Um, so I don't know if you've ever woken up um, sweating because the room was too hot. Um, you've probably experienced that as well. But temperature has been shown in many studies that um, a cool room is really good for good quality sleep. Number six, let's talk about sleep position. So I've read many different studies about this topic and it seems to all contradict each other. I've seen um, studies where people say that front, front sleeping is really good or back sleeping is really good or side sleeping is really good. 
but my overall thoughts is that just get enough sleep it doesn't matter what position um, you sleep in whatever's comfortable for you now um, I personally am a back sleeper um, so I sleep on my back and get in a comfortable position so the mistake some people make if their pillow is too hard or if they have too many pillows is that they can start to bend their neck like this and what that does is restrict blood flow to your brain, uh, which is needed to get good quality sleep. Um, so make sure you're not doing that. Um, just make sure you're in a comfortable position where your neck is neutral, i.e. not bent. Um, and yeah, you can get better quality sleep that way. Hope that helps. Number seven is hydration, nutrition and exercise. These are so important, I probably should have given them three separate points. Um, but these have all been shown in clinical research to improve our sleep quality. So making sure we're taking care of ourselves um, really helps for sleep. Number eight is legal drugs. So things like caffeine and alcohol have a huge impact on our sleep. Um, caffeine tends to activate our sympathetic nervous system and make us feel more awake. So that's the exact opposite of what you want if you want to get good quality sleep. Um, so making sure you avoid caffeine in the later part of the day before you sleep um, really useful. I'm sure many of you already know that. Um, alcohol has a huge um, effect uh, on our sleep because um, again you're re re-diverting resources, blood flow to your liver to process all this uh, alcohol you've just consumed and it's not put to your brain where it needs it for sleep. So if you've ever been hungover, um, that's one of the con consequences. Um, so staying hydrated uh, tends to alleviate that effect as well. Number nine is illegal drugs. So I do not condone any use of illegal drugs on this channel, um, but it's so important to mention because um, it's very obvious that illegal drugs have a huge impact on sleep quality. So something to think about. I don't think this applies to most of you, um, but worth mentioning. And finally, number 10 is supplements. So um, if you've done all of the nine things that I've mentioned so far correctly, you probably don't have a problem with your sleep quality. Um, but for those of you who are interested in, in what medications have been shown to help in research, there is magnesium threonate at 300 to 400 milligrams a day. There's apigenin, A-P-I-G-E-N-I-N, at 50 milligrams a day. And that's a derivative of chamomile, um, the flower. So uh, things like chamomile tea, um, you can also find some, some of this in, uh, which have been shown to help sleep. And finally, theanine, T-H-E-A-N-I-N-E, at 200 to 400 milligrams a day has been shown to help uh, some people in sleep. I don't personally take supplements um, because I find my sleep quality is good enough. Um, but yeah, hope that helps. So that's 10 factors that could be impacting on your sleep quality. If you found this video helpful, smash that like button right now. Um, remember to subscribe to join the brain training community. Um, I'll be putting out videos uh, at least two a week. Um, and yeah, to all of those of you who voted on my Instagram poll, um, which is why I did this video, thank you so much. Um, I, will, I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Um, I'll see you in the next video.